I wonder not just about Planet Nine. I wonder if that's kind of the future of doing science in our solar system is to just launch a huge number of probes. So like a whole order of magnitude, many orders of magnitude, larger numbers of probes, and then start to infer a bunch of different stuff, not just gravity, but everything yes. else. So in this regard, I actually think there is a huge revolution that's to some extent already started, right? The standard kind of like time scale for a NASA mission is that you like propose it and it launches, I don't know, like 150 years after you propose, I'm over exaggerating, but yeah. you know, it's yeah. just like some huge development cycle yeah. and it gets delayed 55 times. Yeah. Like <laughs> that is not going away, yeah. right? The, the really cutting edge things, you have to do it this way because you don't know what you're building, so to speak. But the CubeSat kind of world is starting to, um, you know, provide an avenue for like, you know, launching something that costs, you know, a few million dollars and has a turnaround time scale of like a couple of years. You can imagine doing, you know, PhD theses where you design the mission, the mission goes to where you're going and you do the science all within a time span of five, six years. That is has not been fully executed on yet, but I absolutely think that's on the horizon and we're not talking a decade. I think we're talking like this decade. Yeah, and the company's accelerating all this uh, with uh, Blue Origin and, mm -hmm. and uh, SpaceX. And there's a bunch of more CubeSat-oriented sure. companies that are pushing this forward. Uh, well, let me ask exciting. you. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you on that topic. What do you think about either one? Elon Musk with SpaceX uh, going to Mars. I think he wants SpaceX to be the first to put a first human on Mars. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Jeff Bezos got to give him props. Wants to be the first to fly his own rocket <laughs> out into space. So you know, wasn't there a guy who like? built his rocket out of garbage yeah uh, this was like a couple years ago and somewhere in the desert he, he launched himself i'm not tracking this closely but i think i am familiar with folks who built their own rocket to try to prove the earth is flat yes that's the guy that's i'm talking guy. about yeah he was also like he also jumped some limousine yeah for <laughs> truly revolutionary mind that's right. you have that's right. to, uh greater men than either you or i but yeah. uh what do you <laughs> so look it's been astonishing to watch how really over the last like decade the commercial sector took over this uh you know this industry that traditionally has really been like a you know a government thing to do mm -hmm. Um, motivated primarily by the the competition between nations, like mm -hmm. the Cold War, sure. and now it's motivated more, more and more by the the natural forces of capitalism. Yes, that's right. So, um, okay, here I have I have many ideas about. It. I think on the one hand, right, like what SpaceX has been able to do, for example, phenomenal. Um, if that brings down the price of space exploration, the turnaround time scale for space exploration, which I think it inevitably will, um, that's a huge, you know, that's a huge boost to the to the human condition. The same time, right? If we're talking astronomy, right? There, there also it comes at a huge cost, right? And the Starlink satellites is a mm -hmm. great example of that cost, yeah. right? At one point, uh, in fact, I was just camping in the Mojave with a, with a friend of mine. And they saw, you know, <laughs> this, uh, this string of satellites just kind of like, a, you know, appear and then disappear uh, into nowhere. So that is beginning to interfere with, you know, Earth-based observations. So I think it's, there's tremendous potential there. It's also important to be responsible about how it's executed. Now, with Mars and the whole idea of, you know, exploring Mars, right, I don't have like strong opinions on whether a manned mission is, is required or, or not required. Um, but I do think, you know, we need to focus, the thing to keep in mind is that I, I generally kind of, uh, I'm not signed on, if you will, to the idea that Mars is some kind of a safe haven that we can, mm -hmm. uh, you know, escape to, right? 
Mars sucks, right? Like living on Mars, if you if you want to live on Mars, like you can have that experience by going to the Mojave Desert and camping. And it's just like, it's, it's just not a great. Well, it's interesting, <laughs> but there's something captivating about that kind of mission of us striving out into space. And by uh -huh. making Mars in some way habitable for at least like months at a time, I think would lead to engineering breakthroughs that would make life uh, like in many ways much better on earth. Like it would, will come up with ideas we totally don't mm -hmm. expect yet, both on the robotic side, on the food engineering side, on the, you know, maybe like we'll switch from, we'll, 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 like there'll be huge breakthroughs in insect farming as, as exciting as I find that idea to be. <laughs> that, yeah. that in, you know, our, in the ways we consume protein, maybe, uh, it'll revolutionize. We do factory farming, which is full of cruelty and you know, mm -hmm. and torture of animals. We'll revolutionize that completely because of our like. We don't. We shouldn't need to go to Mars to revolutionize life here on Earth. But at the same time, I shouldn't need a deadline to get shit done. But I do need it. And then the same way, I think we need Mars. There's something about the human spirit that loves that longing for. I, I agree with that thesis. The going to the moon, right, and the the that whole endeavor has, you know, has captivated the imagination of so many. Mm -hmm. And it has, uh, it has led to incredible kind of incredible ideas really. And, and probably in nonlinear ways, right? Mm -hmm. Not like, okay, we went to the moon, therefore some person here has thought of this and yes. this. In, in that similar sense, I think, you know, space exploration is, there's something, there's some real magnetism about it. And it's on a genetic level, right? Like yeah. we have this need to keep exploring, right? When we're done uh, with a certain frontier, we move on to the next frontier. All that I'm saying is that I'm not moving to Mars to live there permanently mm -hmm. uh, ever, you know? And I think that, you know, I'm glad you, paid, you, you noted the kind of degradation of the earth, right? I think that is a true kind of, the leading order challenge of our yeah, time. Yeah, it's a great engineering, yeah, that's, that's right. it's a, a, bunch of, a bunch of engineering problems.